Hello. In this video, we're going to be looking at the mining and refining of metals. Mining and refining is the process of converting a combined metal in a mineral into a free metal. The first thing I want to look at is the overall process. Here you have a flowchart showing the conversion of bauxite or aluminum hydroxide into pure aluminum metal. There's a lot of steps involved here. Some are physical changes and some are chemical changes. We're not going to be concerned with all of the steps, but I do think it's important to see the overall process as there is a lot going on. We're going to be concerned with two different chemical processes in this lecture, one called reduction and another called oxidation. But first, we need a couple of terms. We can define a mineral as a compound containing the metal of interest. You've already encountered a couple of different minerals in this class. For instance, we've seen pyrite with a formula of FeS2, and we've seen chalcosite, chalcosite with a formula of Cu2S. In these cases, in pyrite, iron is the metal of interest, and in chalcosite, copper is the metal of interest. Or, this is the rock that is actually dug out of the ground. That is to say, the rock that contains the metal of interest. That is, a mining company would actually dig the ore out of the ground and then physically separate the minerals from the ore. The metal is the metal of interest. This is what you're aiming for when mining. Refined is the process of extracting a metal from ore. And as I said, this happens in two steps. The first step is extracting the mineral from ore, and that's a physical process. The second step is taking the mineral and extracting the metal out of it, and that requires some chemistry, because that's a chemical step. Let's look at one way we can do that, and that's the formation of copper metal from copper ions. This is a process known as reduction. What I want you to focus on here is the equation. In this equation, we see copper ions gaining two electrons to become copper metal. Now remember that electrons have a negative charge. So if our copper starts with a positive charge, a positive two charge, and it gains two separate electrons, that will reduce that charge down to zero. The other important thing to point out here is that if copper has a charge, it's an ion, and an ion is always bonded to something. So when we see an ion, we know that that ion is part of a mineral. Copper without a charge is a free metal. That is to say, it's all by itself. So this process of gaining an electron is called reduction. And if something has been reduced, that's the past tense, it has gained an electron. We see off to the side here, potentially an example of some reduction. Now the opposite of reduction is something called oxidation. Looking at this process, we have free copper metal, that is uncharged piece of copper, yielding a copper ion and two electrons. This copper ion, remember, is going to be part of a mineral. The important thing to pay attention to here is that copper started out uncharged, and then it lost two electrons, leaving behind a copper ion with a plus two charge. As I said, this is an example of oxidation, or of losing electrons. The past tense, something has been oxidized if it has lost electrons. Here's a really good example of oxidation. Consider this iron nail. An iron nail is just a solid piece of iron, uncharged metal. Then consider the rust that forms on that iron nail. That's an example of iron oxide, or rust. 
Now, if we look at that process as an equation, we have iron and an iron ion as part of rust. In order for that process to happen, the solid iron metal must have lost two electrons. That is to say, that process is an example of oxidation. So rusting is another example of an oxidation reaction. Oxidation and reduction reactions always happen in pairs. We can look at the word ox and red, and we call these things redox reactions. We'll see in this example below why they have to come in pairs. Here's the reaction of solid copper metal with silver ions to make copper ions and solid silver. I want to look at these reactions in two parts. First, the reaction of solid copper to form copper ions, and second, the reaction of silver ions to form solid silver. Take a minute and ask yourself, what must have happened to the copper to generate copper ions? If you said that the copper must have lost two electrons, you're right. Solid copper loses two electrons to leave behind a copper ion. That's an example of oxidation. Take another second and ask yourself, in the second equation, what must have happened to these silver ions to generate silver atoms? If you said that they gained electrons, again, you're right. Gaining electrons is an example of reduction. Now what I want to point out is the number of electrons being gained or lost here. Copper, because it gained a plus two charge, must have lost two electrons. Each silver went from plus one to zero, meaning each silver gained one electron. But because there's two silver ions in my equation, each silver gaining one electron, that means two total electrons must have been gained. So what I want to point out is that the two electrons lost by copper are the same two electrons gained by those silver ions. We didn't gain or lose any electrons, we just traded them. Let's look at one more example. Here we have the reaction of copper ions with magnesium to make solid copper and magnesium ions. Just like before, I want to break it up into two different steps. Copper ions forming solid copper and magnesium forming magnesium ions. Take a second and ask yourself, what happened to those copper ions to make solid copper? If you said that the copper ions must have gained two electrons, you're right. A Cu plus two gaining two electrons generates a solid copper. That's an example of reduction, gaining electrons. In the second example, we have magnesium yielding magnesium ions, and there the magnesium must have lost two electrons. The way that's happening is that a magnesium with a zero charge to form a magnesium with a plus two charge must have lost two electrons. That's a good example of oxidation or of losing electrons. Just like before, copper gained two electrons, the magnesium lost two electrons, so we haven't gained or lost any electrons. Those are the same electrons. This leads us to some final terms. Redox reactions come from re red for reduction and ox for oxidation. And these are reactions where something is oxidized that generates electrons and something else is reduced. Reduction, or gaining electrons, absorbs electrons. So what we're seeing is something is oxidized to generate electrons, and then something else is reduced to absorb those electrons. We can summarize that by saying these redox reactions are reactions where we trade electrons. The final two terms, a reducing agent causes 
something else to be reduced. And an oxidizing agent causes something else to be oxidized. So think about our terms here. Reduction, gaining electrons. Oxidizing, losing electrons. Reducing agent, causing something to get reduced. Oxidizing agent, causing something to get oxidized. And redox reactions, reactions where electrons are traded. Thanks for watching.